that's it. Give him the heater. He's got some pink to him. Just beautiful. Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're in beautiful Alberta. In fact, the Bow River is right behind me, one of the top trout rivers in North America. We're the guests of Fishtails Fly Shop, and we even have a special guest today, and that's Simon Gosworth from Rio Products. We're gonna be talking about streamer fishing, we're gonna be talking about dry fly fishing, we're gonna be talking about techniques for hopper droppers, a whole plethora of different types of information to help you understand more about how to fish a river like this for big trout. It's gonna be a great show, stay with us. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Calgary Tourism, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Rio Products, Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy. fishing. I love it. What is even better is if you can do it in September when the grasshoppers are falling in the water. It's a great time of year for outstanding topwater action. I have traveled to beautiful Alberta to do a drift down the famous Bow River running below the city of Calgary. The Bow is one of the better known rivers in Western Canada because of massive numbers of trout the river supports. Plus the fact you can literally stay in the city at a hotel. Calgary is a vibrant city with wonderful accommodations, restaurants, and sights to see. But for this trip, it's all about fishing. Simon Gosworth from Rio Products has joined me for the next few days as he's a huge fan of topwater action. And I, of course, am thrilled because he's a wonderful person to share a boat with. Of equal importance, I'm looking forward to learning a great deal from Simon as he's a phenomenal angler with a wealth of experience. Guiding Simon and I is Terry Johnson from Fishtails Fly Shop. Terry has been guiding on the Bow River for 20 plus years and is considered one of the top professional guides in the province. Like Simon, I know Terry will help educate me about techniques for catching the big rainbow and brown trout the Bow River is famous for. Since it's first thing in the morning, Terry recommended we start with streamers. Simon is an expert on streamer fishing and shares some great information on rigging options for a two-fly setup. When I'm streamer fishing out of a drift boat on a river like the Bow, there's a couple of things I like to do. First of all, in terms of fly lines, 
I think it's imperative to have a line with a sink tip. You want your fly to land close to the bank and drop down quickly. And so most of the time I start off with a, a line with a very short sink tip on the front end. This is an intermediate sink tip, just a streamer tip line. You can go a faster sink tip if you like, but a short sink tip is much better than a long sink tip because when you've done five or six strips, you can pick up and cast your line straight back to the bank where most of your takes are gonna come from. So that's the type of line that is absolutely ideal for a streamer fishing out of a boat. Then on the front of, the end of this, you wanna put on a leader. This leader is only six foot long, 12 pounds, six foot long, that's perfect. And I tie off the front end of a 12 foot, six pound leader, a thing called a tippet ring, which is this little ring on the front end here. Now, a lot of people tie their first fly onto the leader here and trail a second stream off it. And that works perfectly well for them. I like to fish a lot of stops in my retrieves. And so I want an arm because with an arm, my fly has a lot more independent movement like this, as you can see. So I like to fish an arm off that. And that's why a tippet ring works for me. So if that appeals to you, get yourself some tippet rings, tie yourself off about a six inch dropper like this, again, about the same 12 pound, and that's where you tie your smaller streamer. And then after that, same 12 pound material here, about a foot and a half to two foot onto the big, large fly at the end. And you really do want to make sure your large fly is at the end, because when you cast, that heavy fly pitches and pulls all your line nice and straight. So that's my rig when streamer fishing especially out of a drift boat floating down the river like the beautiful bow here. There you go, fish on. Turn them like that. How about? I like that, just the usual tap, tap, and then on he went. He's a leaper. He's all so, colored up. Net, ready? I'm ready. This is how I will look when I'm ready. Nice. You didn't strike like a heron today. No, no, you know, you got to be a little smooth, slower with these browns. Yesterday was a heron attack with a net. <laughs> this was like a smooth, sedentary grab. All right. Pretty fish. Beautiful pretty brown. brown. Look at that. Pretty brown. Pretty brown. All right, buddy. Skunk's out of the boat. Anytime now. There he goes. Every September, anglers in the West get excited about grasshoppers. Like predictable mayfly hatches, the winds of September mean that large numbers of grasshoppers will be blown into the river, where trout will happily engulf them. On the Bow River, big trout hang tight to the edges looking for these delectable terrestrials to fall haplessly into the water. The question is always, when will the topwater grasshopper bite happen? In order to achieve fishing success, smart fly fishers will use a two-fly rig composed of a grasshopper and a dropper tied to this pattern. Simon explains the setup we're using today to cover both the surface and subsurface bite. So on the bow today, we're gonna to start off fishing what's called a hopper dropper. And that is a rig where you fish a kind of a hopper, it's like a grass hopper, it could be a, but basically a big floating foam dry fly. That is, A, fish could grab it, but B, also holds your fly at a depth you want. And hanging off that, I've got about two, two and a half, three foot of basically what's called a dropper and a heavy jig hook style nymph with a tungsten bead. And the idea is you throw this out and you float and you watch your hopper. And if a fish grabs the nymph, the hopper bobs under or twitches or moves in the current and you set the hook. But equally, a fish could grab this. And if you see a fish come up and grab that, then you obviously set the hook as well. We're looking for seams. We're looking to hit the water that changes currents. And always what the important thing to do, you wanna make sure that this floats down roughly the same speed as the bubbles. Your nymph is doing all the work underneath it. Today, we'll probably get most fish on the nymph. So I've gone on a short seven and a half liter to one X. So a very stout, short liter, because there's a fair amount of wind resistance on this. That'll turn this over with ease. And then there's this dropper two and a half to three feet down. And that is a typical hopper dropper rig 
and that's what we're going to be using here today on the bow. Two fish on the hopper before 10 o'clock, that's good. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll take that. That's better. Not giant, but better. Well, he's almost bending the rod. That's good. Oh, I can get him to bend the rod. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a gooder. He says, not today. No. Not right now. Yeah, steelhead, all right. I just tore him, tied him out. Yeah, just keep jumping, just keep jumping. One rare lift in your mind. There he comes, there he comes, heads up. Nice. Well done. Nicely done. Ah, That's it. just been in. Fly works with a hook on. I am so relieved that it wasn't just my ability <laughs> at setting a damn hook, or inability. <laughs> oh dear. It's a better fish. Finish your shenanigans yet, Trout? Get your head up. Come into the... and skim, 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 skim. Nice. All right, dry fly. Nice. All right, fellas. That's a wee bit better. A wee. Oh, there's that fly right there. Open up, thank you. Okay. Nice. So that was uh, dry fly and the fish rose. We floated down, made a cast about two feet above it, dead drift down. And the fish, the little bit of light, the sunlight, you could see the silver flanks come up. All the time in the world to prepare for the hook set. And then down he came, set the hook nice and easy. Beautiful, that is dry fly fishing at its best. Absolutely fantastic way of catching fish. I love going into a well-stocked fly shop. It's like a candy store to me. Fishtails Fly Shop, which is located right in Calgary and not far from the Bow River, is one of those great candy shops. Since 1997, Fishtails Fly Shop has become recognized as the place to visit for local knowledge, technical information, and expertise. Owners David Blair and Nancy Storwick have created a warm and comfortable retreat for anglers young and old. Fly fishing equipment, instructional courses, and guiding. They and their staff offer it all. For fly fishers visiting Calgary, this is a must-see fly shop. Later in the day, Simon took out his two-handed fly rod and started swinging soft hackle flies from the bank. This is a deadly technique for catching trout, and it's also a lot of fun. Uh, when you're looking at a river, one of the ideal locations you can see above me here and kind of below me here, you're looking for water like this. This is a really good 
typical soft tackle water. And you're looking for water that's moving because you want the current to swing the fly. You don't want dead slow water. You don't want white water that's tearing down. I'm just going to start with a short line in here. Just get the line and the tip out. And all I'm trying to do is cast my end fly. I've got two flies. The second one tied off a tippet ring. My point fly, the furthest fly, I want to cast it just into the quicker water and then both flies swing out of that quicker water into the soft water. And that's why I like fishing two flies is you're covering a lot of water swinging with two flies, especially when you tie them off something like a tippet ring, which makes it really easy to do. So now that's swung around, I'm going to go down a couple of steps and pop my fly back out and just work my way down this inside seam to the bottom. And that is swingy soft tackles on a spay rod. <music> Have a look at what soft tackles are. So I've got a little box here of my kind of go-to soft tackles for most river fishing. I've got dozens of these boxes because I'm a, such a big fan. And this kind of gives you an idea of the array of flies. There's some large ones and there's medium, and there's average and there's micros and there's tinies, but they all follow a theme. And that theme is they have a hackle at the front of the head that slopes back made of a soft hen type feather and the idea, hence the name soft hackle, is that when you increase and decrease tension, your hackles pulse and give this lifelike movement. And so this is a selection of type of soft hackles I have. These big ones I like to use as point flies when I'm searching. Now these ones are October caddis type colors. So if the fish are feeding on October caddis or they're feeding on the pupa and the larvas in the water, then I might put on one of these. And then generally speaking, you want to mix up and always have a smaller fly. My smaller flies might be something down here. I've got some gray ones. I've got some ones with greenish body and gray hackles. I've got some yellow ones here, like PMD patterns. So you can simulate the hatches with the soft hackles. You get the same kind of color variations. And that's a good thing to know because when you're fishing to rising fish with soft hackles, if they're rising on PMDs, well, fish a yellow body one. If they're rising on blue winged olives, fish one with an olive body. You're going to get a lot more success by observing that color scheme, if you like. And if you don't know what those flies are, just go by the color. Look at what the color of the natural flies are flying around or lying on the water and pick something similar to that. Perfect, in exactly the type of water you'd fish a soft tackle. I think he's taking the larger fly on the point. Decent fish. And just one of the joys of fishing soft tackles is the grab, the tightening of the line, the take. Oh, he's in a nice rainbow. Let's just get him into the slower water so we can get him in. Oh no, he's on the small dropper. The small blue winged olive. Soft tackle. Let's see if we can get him in here. Nicely done. A cracking little rainbow off the boat. Look at that for a beautiful trout. It is! That's a huge fish. That's a beast. <laughs> and it hit the dry right at the end of the day here. That's the little dry, the little one too. That's awesome. Yeah, try and get him up on the... 
Oh, it drops off right there. Careful. Yeah. That's it. Slide them over. Nice, 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 nice. Scoop them up. <laughs> well done. Launch bit. That's the way to end the That's day the there. The end the day. Well done, Colin. Boy, we had pulled over and <laughs> said, "That's it, boys!" Exactly. And all of a sudden, fish on. Oh, beauty too. Look at that guy. See if he'll behave. Oh yeah. Okay, fish. There we go. There we go. Now he's behaving. Are you ready? I'm gonna let you slide out. We hope you enjoyed today's show. What a fantastic fishery the Bow River is. I want to thank the people at Fishtails Fly Shop for having us here. David, Nancy, Terry, Brian. We had a great few days here. And of course, Simon Gosworth from Rio Products, who taught us a lot about fly lines, how to tie different knots, leader setups, all the things you need to be an effective fly fisher. If you want to learn more about this show, about Calgary, the Bow River, go to our website, thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the water. Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Calgary Tourism, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Rio Products, Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy.